and uni through what we usually define global uni, state of the art, and more. So we learn more as a venture, and you got probably very aware about the super classroom, uh, the research units in the United States. And you will actually see what is presented over here. This is not a cartoon that says, it's not a very good answer like that. Find your community around your good job. Let me just take a second. How can you allow a very wounded employee? What do you mean wounded? We are facing so many wounds. Some of those wounded employees. It's resources. But the most important thing is Artificial intelligence is, not, is no longer a futuristic, futuristic idea. It is here, reimagining how we work, interact, and build our economies. In the next five to 10 years, AI is integrated into nearly every field, from healthcare to finance, and from education to agriculture. AI is even beginning to step into roles that were once considered uniquely human. As an example, a few days ago, I came across a news of an AI-powered robot performing one of the most, what we thought, human services, cutting hair. And I immediately, of course, had to think about our thriving hairstyling industry, and particularly my friend Katsi, and what's going to be the future for the industry. So this isn't a vision of the distant future anymore. It is our present. With this transformation, we must face the reality of disruption as well. So many jobs will evolve. Others will disappear altogether. And here in Kosovo, as around the world, both the private and public sectors will require a workforce that can adapt, learn, and grow in a rapidly changing landscape. And with this, we are in, in urgent need of upskilling our workforce with AI as well as reskilling them in sectors where AI will replace most of the current jobs we have. A recent study I read showed how AI is an incredible opportunity for developing countries to catch up much quicker and become a developed economy. But it also showed the danger if we don't seize the moment and invest in it. And in this transformative moment, we at UNI Universum International College are proud, deeply proud, to be powered by Arizona State University, America's most innovative university for 10 years straight, and the biggest public university in the US, with 180,000 students and a budget exceeding $5.6 billion, almost two years of our Kosovo's budget. Ranked number one in global impact and sustainability, ASU has set benchmarks that redefine what's possible in higher education. ASU was the first to partner with OpenAI, placing it uniquely at the intersection of AI research application and ethical frameworks, making it a global leader in AI and education. This partnership with ASU is more than a collaborative effort. It is a source of empowerment for every layer of our society. With ASU, our students gain access to unmatched academic opportunities, preparing them to be leaders in the fields of tomorrow. Our faculty and staff benefit from world-class research and professional development opportunities, expanding their ability to teach and inspire. But most importantly, this partnership empowers our country to become a regional leader in the AI revolution. Today, we launch ASI, ASU's AI workforce upskilling programs to enable Kosovars to gain critical expertise in AI, aligning with the needs of industry and the world. Through, AI, uh, through Career Catalyst, we also offer programs to reskill and empower those who are ready to adopt and embrace new opportunities in the evolving workforce. This partnership will bring the most advanced AI upskilling and reskilling programs not only to our businesses, but to our government and public institutions. By equipping professionals with these skills they need to lead, we're building a foundation for sustainable growth 
prosperity, and technological leadership in Kosovo. Together, ASU and UNI are creating pathways that empower Kosovo to rise as a model for educational innovation in the region. I want to thank Minister Izanoli and the Government of Republic of Kosovo for not only being with us today, but for prioritizing digitalization, technology, and AI. And I want to thank Marco and Faith from ASU for flying more than 20 hours to be with us today in this important milestone for our country. And to sum it up, in Kosovo we have around 20,000 high school leavers every year. But we have 600,000 people in the workforce that need reskilling and upskilling. So our task is big, bold, and important. Thank you all for coming. And I wish an inspirational day ahead. It is my great honor to invite to stage Minister Rizvan Oli, uh, Dr. Rizvan Oli, who is the Minister for Economic Development in Republic of Kosovo, um, for, for, for uh, a greeting speech for you all. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here uh, today uh, to launch together with you the Arizona State University's AI career upskilling programs in Kosovo at Universum International College. Um, I um, enjoy this event for several reasons. First is that um, having an academic background and as an economist, I very much know value and recognize that without um, skilled highly skilled workforce, uh, we will not have the economic growth and development that we need. I want to put the, the uh, stress here on the economic development part rather than just economic growth in, and this also as a minister, because having the skills and using them for growth is not enough. We need to transfer to uh, transform these skills into economic development and we need also an equitable society and for this uh, we need to have access to the right high quality um, and market responsive training and um, education uh, facilities and programs uh, to enable this upscaling of our workforce of course these are important also for digital transformation, which is at the core of our national strategy and economic priorities. These economic priorities are also objectives um, of our Digital Agenda 2030, which sets forth a vision for a modern technology-driven Kosovo, where digital technology serves as a pillar for innovation, industry growth, and international collaboration. As a ministry and as a government, we are doing all the groundwork to build the necessary infrastructure, but also other conditions that enable this. Last year, for instance, we covered our last village with broadband infrastructure. Every uh, part of Kosovo, every settlement is now covered with high-speed internet, which puts us the first in the region and among the top uh, eight European countries in terms of access to high-speed internet. On the other hand, our public telecom is modernizing mobile networks across the country and in a month we'll have covered all of Kosovo with modern 5G or um, 4G plus technology in rural areas. Uh, and this is spurring further investment and competition throughout the sector also among its private competitors. As a government, we have undertaken numerous efforts to digitalize public services. 117 so far are provided through our platform eCosovo aiming to provide citizens with faster, more efficient, and accessible government services. In parallel to investing in infrastructure, we are ensuring that all those who need it have access to it and affordable access to it. For instance, in the past three years, we have connected all education institutions and over 250 schools and public health institutions um, to um, internet access for free. To address the institutions, the needs of the internet. Very briefly, starting into uh, into this presentation, I usually joke saying that uh, an image speaks a thousand words. 
So I would just like to start sharing a couple of images and just to try to illustrate the point on what is it that we are, that we are doing nowadays. Uh, I would like to show you an image like, uh, before I jump into that, just going into the outline overall, as I was describing uh, four overall points, why this is important. I will be speaking about what we are facing nowadays, which is defined as the learning economy, uh, UNIS and ASU's approach, and the call to action that we have in place. But while jumping into, into the topic overall, as I, as I was sharing, uh, an image speaks a, a thousand words, and I would just like to start with a couple of reflections, just trying to illustrate this through a couple of images. And I, I look at all of you in the audience, and uh, uh, this is something that happens within, I would say, the private sector, the public sector, where we have individuals from different generations. And the very first idea that I would like to put in everyone's minds is that over the last couple of decades, we have moved from a place, from a world having something like this, to having something like this. Just very briefly jumping into this, I would say a uh, uh, reflection. We have moved from a world with something like this to a world with something like this. And I don't want to bother you with a, with a lot of examples. The last example, and I took it a little far away, disclaimer for this one, we have moved from a world with something like this. Yes, I took it a little far away with this last image. But we have moved from a world with, a play, with something like this to a world with something like this. And the overall point that I want to, that I, that I want to put in everyone's minds while speaking uh, about this is this is not new for all of us. But the overall point that I want to highlight is, yes, as uh, Minister Rivanelli and President Alitian uh, were sharing during their remarks, our world is continuously changing. And I would like to jump into the particular case of technologies like artificial intelligence, as both of, us were, uh, both of them were highlighting. Uh, I would say, yes, the world is evolving, and it is evolving because of technology. Something that, I will, that, uh, that we'll be discussing in the second part of the session that we will have today on the master class focus a little uh, bit more on HR professionals is the discussing the specific challenge that human resources, talent management, training and development units within organizations, corporations, are facing nowadays. Which, long story short, is about to a dual, an AI dual imperative. What I've been describing, what I have described so far about developing an AI literate workforce, and I usually say, when we speak about the future of our organizations, it is just the way that everyone needs to be able to read. Second is not the who, but it is the how. How should we address, when I was speaking about this rate of change, everything that is happening nowadays, how should we address that? Through learning solutions that leverage new technologies. What do we mean by that? Which topics 